Ladies and gentlemen, friends, we're almost at the end of the day. We've just heard back a report back from the studios where we got a chance to roll our sleeves up and get into some new ideas. And we were earlier in the marketplace where we saw some existing ideas, which I think you'll agree, some of them really have the potential to change the world. The question then becomes one of scale. And that's what I'd like to spend a few moments discussing with these two esteemed friends we have here, Prakash and Marta. Um, Prakash, let's begin with you. Look, I was reading about, uh, Prakash is the uh, managing director of the two-wheeler business for Mahindra. Do you know that every year in India, 17 million two-wheelers are sold across the country, every year? Now, I also read that the government, uh, and, and I know you have a dream as well, that one day we'll get to a, a transition of, of these vehicles to be all electric. Uh, but I also read that over the last eight years, only well, less than half a million of these two-wheelers have actually been sold. Only half a million. So the question I have for you, and you're a man of scale, you understand the scale that we need to get to, is how do we bridge that gap? What is the opportunity to scale here? How do we do it? Well, as, as we were saying in our earlier discussions with Martha and yourself, Chester, I think the important thing is that there has to be a collaborative framework where multiple players have to play a role. I don't think any one entity, institution, or, or individual, or business can actually make it happen. Uh, we talked earlier about what's happening in Oslo, and Martha will talk more about it, obviously, but there, the fact that policy has led to adoption by citizenry mm. is a huge plus. There are many different businesses which are taking initiatives in India in this space. Uh, Mahindra is one of them. Tata is doing a lot of great work. But the key is to be able to see adoption happen mm. at an individual level. When mindsets and cultures change, when I feel I'm happy to sit in a cab that's electrically powered, even though I may pay 10% more because I'm doing my bit for the environment, yeah. that's when change will come. Mm. Up until then, it will be a lot of good talk and sporadic incidents. Will, uh, events will, will occur, but I don't see scale happening unless there is a, a systemic movement towards it. Oh, interesting, Martin. Is, is that systemic approach something that you've taken on in the city of Oslo? Because I, 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 I was away from Oslo for a couple of years, just returned, and I'm amazed to see electric vehicles all over the place. I'm not sure what the uptake is currently. I think in uh, 2017, uh, 52% of all new car sales were EVs. Over half? Over half. over half in Oslo, the Oslo area was uh, over half uh, was EVs, and of course that's amazing. Um, and I, I totally agree with you. Uh, it has to be a collaboration. And and but um, from my point of view, which is uh, a politician's point of view and a regulator's point of view, you can do, go about it in different ways. Uh, when you see the Paris talks, of course you can see now that the world leaders are aiming for a goal, and at some point it's going to come down to that bring that goal to the ground. Mm. And I see businesses all around the world seeing that. And how can you be a part of tomorrow's solution? Because you don't want to be the last one standing there on the, when the train comes, not get on. Because yes. then, I mean, your shareholders wouldn't like that. <laughs> so I think what you, when you set goals, which is uh, maybe not about uh, the bottom line or the money, when you set the goals to, I don't know, save the planet, give people better health, give people uh, more quality time with their families instead of standing in queues for four hours a day to get to work. Um, we have to collaborate. And in Oslo <coughs> and in Norway, um, I guess what we said from the government's point of view is that we have to be in on it, we have to regulate, but we have also have to help the business community deliver the products. Mm. We're not going to make the products ourselves as uh, governments, but we can create a, a market so that the risk is lower for the business community. And you have to do that to make the shift. So what we have done in Norway is we have cut the taxes on EVs. They're all gone. So when we import EVs to Norway, it's no tax. Makes it very cheap to buy, or cheaper to buy. And then on the local uh, government, we have made it free to park, free to charge. You can ride in the bus lane so you don't have to queue. And it's also free uh, in the toll system. So the incentives are very high now to get an EV. And also what we have done now, after about 10 years of this policy, which is just being giving incentives to the EV owners, now we flipped it around. And now we've uh, increased the tolls on the fossil fuel cars. Now it's getting even more expensive to own a fossil fuel car and buy a fossil fuel car. So now the gap is even more 
uh, is bigger. And then you see a sudden change and you see a lot of products coming in on the market. And now about what you said, uh, are people ready to get in an EV and hoping to God it's gonna, you're not going to run out of a battery? I just have to tell you a story. Uh, last weekend I went up to the mountains as Norwegians do. Uh, four hours in the car up to go to the mountain to ski. It was a normal family car, an uh, electric vehicle, and we stopped for 15 minutes to charge. And we got in and got a coffee. When we came out, it was done. And we uh, were up at the cabin. That's, when we come to this, it doesn't really make sense to own a petrol car, which is more expensive and also pollutes. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's fascinating. Obviously, there are vastly different geographies from Norway to India, and there's yeah. many big differences yeah. we arrange across the, across the board. Something I'm hearing you both mentioning, yeah. though, is this systemic approach, the idea to bring multiple actors together, yeah. where, and I guess we talked a little earlier, didn't we, Prakash, about the need to put the, the pieces of the puzzle all together at the right time. I wonder, Marta, you mentioned before a little about the, the role of government in I guess bringing that, that, that role of, of uh, coordinating those various stakeholders. Prakash, here, uh, your experience of who brings that system together, who gets it going to coordinate it, what is the role of business and society and uh, the government in that interaction? Well, I think it's very early days here in India at least because lots of different people, well-intentioned from government to private players, uh, vendors and developers and scientists, I think working together to try and sort of pull it together. Mm. 2030 is a, is a benchmark. I don't see that happening, very honestly, because I think right from charging infrastructure all the way down to battery and battery prices, disposal, all of that has to get tied in. Yeah. It'll take time, but I think directionally we are there. Mm. What is important, uh, I think, is now for, for this to get an impetus. Charging infrastructure is, is the lifeblood, as, as Martha said. To be able to do it, or swappable batteries, mm. Can imagine all fuel stations getting converted to merely swappable batteries, in and out. That kind of vision has to be driven, and I think without laying it on, on the government, because government alone can't do it, I think there is a need for organized, consistent implementation of policy, mm. at the same time uh, an awareness, a growing awareness to uh, make it affordable, beneficial, what's in it for me answers for the citizenry. When that begins to happen, you will start seeing a confluence and I think the head of steam will just take it forward. Sure. Uh, fascinating. I think the, the, if you look to the end user and the role of the citizen and all of this, I think uh, it sounds like some of, the, some of the lessons that we've learned in Oslo uh, can, can have some resonance here in India. I, I also heard uh, yesterday, Mahdi had a lunch with Anand Mahindra himself, uh, and you had an interesting conversation about some of the urban, urban planning and the, the role that in Norway you've gone to electric vehicles, but here in India, it's a lot about the two-wheelers, yeah. the motorbikes and the scooters. Would you like to share just a little bit about that? Well, I thought it was really interesting because, I mean, in, in a lot of Asian countries, uh, in India as well, I mean, the, the bikes and the two-wheelers are a uh, thing that you see all around. It's a way of uh, transporting yourself. Uh, and, of course, in, in Norway, it's not like that. And we have focused a lot about uh, switching out the, the fossil fuel cars. But really what's happening in Norway, we are also growing even if we're only five million, and it's a huge country. But in Oslo, for example, we are surrounded by uh, the forests and the sea. And the citizens of Norway doesn't want us to start chopping down the forests. No, forest. So we have to grow within the limits. And now space is starting to be a, be a problem. And when I landed in Mumbai, of course, that was, I mean, the, <laughs> the density of population, how you kind of just use every square feet of the city. And I was thinking that uh, what, uh, Mahindra and, and uh, the societies here uh, in, in uh, India, how we need to start talking about other things than cars, because mm. it's ju just not going to be room. 200,000 more inhabitants in Oslo over the next 15 years. If everyone brings a car, it's not going to be room. So I had a great discussion actually with uh, Prakash and, uh, and uh, uh, Mahindra about maybe we should start talking about also more two-wheelers instead of just cars. Uh, and, uh, and we had the discussions about what types and, and if, if it's possible to bring that totally new thing into to, uh, society as Norway. I think it is. And I think we have to talk more about that. It's just not, just not about not polluting. It's also about sharing the space we have. Absolutely. Interesting. And I think it's the, it's the adoption rate you have in, in Norway for many of these technologies, not just within e-mobility, but across the board, is, is quite outstanding. So it's a, it's a lot to be 
a lot to be said about that. And we'll continue this conversation and many other conversations in uh, November, on the 28th and 29th of November, when the City of Oslo is going to be one of the partners in the Zinteo Exchange of Norway, to which you all are humbly welcome and invited to. Uh, I would like to thank our guests here, Marta and Prakash, for joining me on stage here this afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Prakash. Thank you. Thank you, Marta. Thank you, Prakash. Thank you, thank you very much.